He's in the music video with them. So good. Jamal! Crocs, come, come, uh, sponsor your your boy. Yeah. It's coming back. I'm a power. I'm gonna educate you kids. Are you kids listening to Little Yachty? Are you kids thumping that Kanye West? This is artistry. If you saw him perform, he takes his artistry to a thousand. Level 9,000, as these kids say. Thank you both my spirit and as these kids say. Okay, what else is that? People always ask why you use straps so frequently. Yeah, like I'm a fucking cheater just because I'm using straps and I'm pulling sumo. Fucking haters. Um, so, a lot of related question that will tie around. A lot of people ask me like, um, like, oh, this hurts or oh, this happens when I lift. What do I do? Hip hurts when I squat, shoulder hurts when I bench, whatever. Um, and with all that stuff, you have to start to look at what may be causing it. So when I first tweaked my back, I don't know, two years ago, um, I started to analyze what could be possibly happening. And so I was doing very high volume deadlifts um, conventional and sumo, uh, a very hip dominant, low back dominant squat. Uh, and I was using the same grip over and over on a deadlift. And what can happen, uh, you'll see sometimes, is kind of a helicopter factor. Sometimes people miss weights doing this in a deadlift, but if not, it's naturally easier to lock in this overhand lat than it is the underhand lat. And so whether I'm thinking about it or not, I think I was repeatedly pulling over 500 pounds very slightly like this. And of course, what happened? My low right upper or low lower right back started to hurt. So in my off season, uh, I started to use straps to keep it symmetrical. Um, when it goes into prep mode, I'll probably start to alternate sets, um, get ambidextrous, bidextrous. It's a spectrum of grips. And uh, I've never had a grip issue. So if you've had a grip issue, you probably gotta not, you gotta dish the straps. But um, I used straps for, I don't know, three months. And then I had a three month break because my back hurt. And then I just did an eight week prep, uh, no straps. And I pulled the 705 and grip was the least of my worries. So um, for me, I'm really not worried about it. If and when I decide to prep for a meet, I'll go barehanded for eight to 16 weeks. No, zero issues with my grip. Another common question, uh, how do I train my grip if you do have grip issues? Um, all accessory work, I, ex I, I suggest doing barehanded. All work we ever do, squat, bench, dead, overhead, anything. Uh, people say white knuckles, uh, but you're just squeezing the bar as hard as you can, trying to juice that bar as hard as you freaking can. Um, and then the other thing, if you have mega issues, which we've done with a couple of the uh, guys I coach, Dan and even Smokey a little bit, uh, at the top of your deadlift, every single rep, if not just the last rep, if you're doing higher reps, uh, hold the set, hold the deadlift lockout, strong, tight core, flex knees, flex glutes uh, for five seconds, every single deadlift day. Um, grip is very specific. All lifting and strength is specific, but grip is very specific. So you wanna get strong in that deadlift uh, position with whatever grip you plan to pull your heavy deadlifts with. eat a meal yet. It's carbless, keto, fasted. The starvation bench press workout. Feeling gravy, bro. I mentioned it's Michael Jackson's birthday. No. 
Do you even care? Greatest performer to ever live. He inspired much of my dancing. Which hopefully you guys are following me on Instagram. I've been trying to portray a little more of my hips don't lie for you guys. Dang, I had a breath. The bench press made me out of breath. Heading to New York. This will be the last little uh, vlogaruski at Unattained for a little while. Heading to New York for a week. Gotta do some laundry, pack up, heading tomorrow. Then I come back for Come back for a day or two. And then off to LA. Oh, damn. in the groove. It's the lighting. Hey, one. If you were tan, you'd be able to see that. You know how fashion goes in rotations. In the 1400s, pale skin was in, so. You think it's gonna swing back I'm around? Trend setting, bro. Trend setting. 2020, it's gonna swing back around? Yeah. True Blood, me, the 1400s. Go ahead and film the moist man. What's the uh, rules for the strict overhead? Competition rules. Good question. So you have to, like any of the movements, when you walk it out, the bar has to be motionless, right? Uh, so you can't like step back in presses or walking backwards. Uh, the bar can hover, it can float. It doesn't have to touch your collarbones, but it can. Yeah. It has to be below your chin. I was gonna say. Yeah. Look, sorry, Doc, I got a real, uh, <laughs> real shoulder issue. Yeah, so it has to be below your chin. Okay. Um, and then your knees have to be locked out. So you can never ever bend your knees at all. Yeah. Your hips, you can have horizontal displacement of the hips. Yeah. So when you see me press like hips like this, so you're allowed to do that all you want. Um, there can be no upward and then downward motion of the bar. So if you're here and you like, yeah. and then bounce down like that, it doesn't count. Yeah. But you can have that like stretch reflex bounce that I use yeah. where you're here and then it kind of goes down and up. You're allowed to do that. Uh, the rules for lean back, they're kind of, uh, they're not, I don't know how strictly they're enforced. I've done one before, because it's really hard to see. Yeah. But the plane of the front of your shoulder cannot go past the plane of your butt. So when you're leaning back like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can't be way back like this. Um, so there's side judges for that. And then it has to be locked out, head over. Parallel is technically hit below your hit, uh, knee. But it's all up to this human's call. Right, it's all so much one light, yeah. one red light. Yeah, yeah. Very so. interesting. Do some uh, inclines. And then uh, back, biceps. Call her a day. Find some food. Now I'm gonna go stream Madden on our new gaming channel. I'm looking for approval from Connor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you guys wanna check that out, we'll throw it in the description. Uh, I played games my whole life. Back to the Nintendo <laughs> NES system. A lot of time on N64. Uh, spent a good amount of time on Xbox when Halo came out. I was really, really into Halo up until about Halo 3. Uh, took a little break from it, then played a little bit of Call of Duty, Black Ops 1 and 2, another little break, and then uh, two years ago I got um, Xbox One, got really into Black Ops 3, played a little bit of Infinite Warfare, um, but recently got a PlayStation, and we will be jamming on Call of Duty World War 2 when it drops. Uh, I have one live stream up on the channel right now, 
hopefully a couple more by the time this drops. Um, although it's not available yet, uh, that I played the beta. I may play some Madden. I'm a 2K guy a little bit, uh, but Call of Duty is my main, my main jammer. Uh, check it out below. Comment what you think I should name the channel and also comment favorite games you guys like to play or like to see me play. Here you go. We talked about working my way back into the volume. Frequency is fairly low, benching twice a week, overhead once or twice. Squats, I just started doing twice a week again. Deadlifts once a week. Going to New York, hopefully gonna get at least three training days there. I'm going for about six days. What are we talking about? What you talking about? Feeling pretty good. Uh, back's feeling good, quads feeling decent. Excited to put it into powerlifting, get back into shape. Diet's locked in, um, feeling leaner. Still about 212, 210, uh, but about my leanest. I've been at that weight. That's why I use straps. That's why you guys can train your fucking grip. Appreciate you guys. I'm gonna go get some food, sleep, pack, and I'll see you in the Big Apple. The city that never sleeps. The city that Patrick Ewing built. Who do you know who Patrick Ewing is? God damn.